Hello, my name is Alexander and we're here at Skyfeather Studios in one of the editing bays where I'll be showing you how to do two transitions. The warp transition, which basically um, bends the uh, corners of the image as if you had something like a fisheye lens digitally and then also the RGB split that uh, will take the image and split it out into red, green, and blue and allow you to adjust those channels separately. Uh, it's perfect for when you kind of want to get those glitchy effects on your uh, video. So first we'll start with the warp transition uh, and I'll actually show you. So we have the spot here that we did for Luminex, a watch company that wanted kind of like a edgy athletic video. Uh, and you'll see two examples in here. You'll actually see the, the video that's about to play breeze at the beginning, and you'll see the edges of the actual breathing kind of color fringe out. That is both a combination of the RGB split and the warp stabilizer, or sorry, the warp distortion. And then you'll also notice when it transitions between this and the next clip, it is also having that uh, warp transition in it. So go ahead and watch. So I'm going to show you how to do the uh, lens warp distortion transition first. So what you'll want to do is get your first clip, drag it, and kind of um, edit it out as far as you want. Drag your second clip right next to it. So now we have uh, two clips that we're just going to transition in between. And really important before we actually apply this transition, um, I think it's best to do your edits before you actually do this. This uh, particular effect should be done at the end because the way we're going to be editing it is we're actually going to be compounding that clip, which will make them the same one, and those nodes will take over. So get all your you know color grading, all your video motion adjustments, zooms and post, whatever, done first. So first, uh, what we need to do is actually put our cursor at the very middle point of the two clips and we'll just go ahead and add a marker in there so that we know where we're going to uh, actually I wanted to add that to the timeline so make sure you click off your clips but uh, anyways this will actually allow us to keep the uh, keep track of where this transition is while we compound it and now it's actually become one clip so we're gonna want to add that marker again to the clip that way we know where one clip ends and the other one begins in this case right here it's perfect and the reason you want to do this is because it helps us keep track of where we're going to actually put the transition it's not like a regular one where you can just put it in and adjust the length of it it's one that we're going to actually need keyframing for so go to your color tab and we have our clip here and if we go back forth back and forth you'll see it's right on the cusp of the two clips where it transitions between clip a and clip b so you're going to want to add a brand new node add the lens distortion effect onto that node. And you'll notice first um, the edge behavior on this actually crops out and adds black. You can also do reflect, you can do uh, wrap around, you can do duplicates. This is really useful if you wanna zoom out, but uh, the most common one really you'll see is a uh, distortion where it actually extends the corners of the video instead of shrinks them. So it's really important to be on that particular section where the clip itself is uh, transitioning between the two points because that's generally where you're going to want to most emphasize the transition. So in this case, what we want to do is click on this keyframe and you'll notice all of them have lit up red. That means now that that value is going to be recorded at that particular point. So let's go ahead and just set that to something like five. Uh, we'll go like 10 frames out, set it to zero. And then you can use these arrows to go back to the original keyframe. Three, four, five, six. And then you can add a keyframe there. And what you just did was actually automate it so that it changes the value. So, right there. So, really important is each side really should restart at zero unless you're using this particular effect throughout the entire clip. Otherwise, it won't properly animate. So, you'll see here. And while it's not the prettiest, um, really there are ways you can sort of emphasize it even more. One of them being, uh, I like to add a lens bloom or even motion blur. Or, uh, you know, the other one I was going to talk about now is the actual RGB split. The reason I bundled these tutorials is because they use the actual same plugin. The only difference being that this box here where it says gang, you want to uncheck that. So what you just did is the red, green, and blue distortion were originally linked into the same values. So that way when you had just adjusted one, it would automatically adjust all the other ones. Now if we go back right here to where it's at that height of uh, five for each one, we can actually adjust these independently. So we'll set this to one, two, 
and three. And you'll notice now you get this awesome, you know, kind of glitchy color fringing on the edges, almost like a chromatic aberration. That's because you're actually adjusting each one of these independently. So you can sort of adjust these to whatever you want. Uh, I don't recommend going below zero, mainly though, uh, because you'll get that crop on it unless you use a different type of edge behavior. But you'll see here, you know, you can kind of just adjust this to how, you know, how intense you will actually want this to look. And then if we just go back, you'll see you get that nice glitchy RGB split. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can actually stack these on top of each other, um, like the one I showed you in the video. All you'd actually have to do is just add another serial and then use the exact same process we used before. To make it easier, you can click on our node originally that we used for our RGB split, go back to where it's at its height, and then say, add a nice little uh, crazy lens distortion effect, then go back, Go one, one, and you'll see we have a combination of them. Whoops, forgot to set that to zero again. Really important. Set that to zero also. There we go. So now you kind of have both stacked on top of each other, and that's that's usually how people get those uh, super glitchy effects you see in like travel vlogs, for instance. Uh, it's been kind of a transition going or a trend going around lately. And also, even if you want to customize it more, you can actually change the X and Y position. So, for instance, if you did it in the corner, you'll notice that it allows you to adjust which specific quadrant you want to do. And then finally, if you want to do blend, this allows you to sort of just like it says, change the opacity between the images. In this case, with the RGB split, you can see uh, it's going to sort of fade them in there. And this is really nice if you have something where you just want like a really rapid transition. Uh, it's how I do things like camera shake or when I have, uh, for instance, in this clip when he lands in the water. Let's find that real quick right there. I added a camera shake in post and then a little bit of that RGB split with some uh, lens blur on top of it to sort of emphasize it even more. And all of those kind of combined give it that, you know, polished quality. Where in this example, unfortunately, I feel like, you know, with them on top of each other, it's not too bad. But add more things, experiment with it, and I think you'll get some great results. 